today on the Basketball Manitoba podcast, we have Joanne Small. Joanne is a former player with the University of Winnipeg Westman, where she put together one of the all-time careers in Canadian collegiate basketball history. Check this out. She was National Player of the Year, First Team All-Canadian three times, CIS Championship Tournament All-Star Team four times, Canada West Player of the Year, Canada West First Team All-Star two times, Conference Rookie of the Year, Conference Second Team All-Star, and was recognized as U Sports Top 100 Women's Basketball Players of the Century in 2020. If that wasn't enough, in her final year with the Westman, she led the CIS in scoring, averaging 24 points per game, and is fourth on the Westman's all-time scoring list. She is one of the youngest players to be inducted into the Basketball Manitoba Hall of Fame. Joanne, welcome to the podcast. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, before uh, before we went live, um, I was asked you something. I was like, "How does this make any sense?" About you know, I'm, I'm reading off your 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 accolades here, and it says that somehow you were a first team All Canadian three times, but then you were only a first team All Star two times in the conference. But then when I was reading it, I was like, oh, well, that makes sense because one of the years you were Canada West Player of the Year. And I think if I'm if I'm not mistaken, that you probably they probably, you know, do their awards and then one player is like the best player, but you don't actually you're not actually considered one of the first teams because you're player of the conference. Does that make sense? Yes, that it that probably <laughs> is it. <laughs> Okay, because that's what I was wondering. I'm like, this doesn't make sense. And while I'm reading it, I'm like, okay, yeah, that makes perfect sense. But I have a bone to pick with that. I've always wondered, I always found it confusing. If you use like the NBA or even other leagues as, as a, a, you know, an example, like the MVP is always a, is, was one of the first team players as well. So I don't know why they do that, but whatever. That's that's not for us to decide. Um, so what I want to do is start kind of at the beginning. Um, and now I know you're, you're from Nova Scotia you're actually from Manitoba. So you didn't play high school here. Um, but you played for the Westman. And so I'm going to go on a limb, you know, when you were recruited and you came to Winnipeg, it definitely wasn't because of the weather. Um, and then I actually interviewed, uh, you know, your coach, uh, who's also from Nova Scotia as well. And I asked asked her the same thing. And I was like, why why did you come out here? I know it wasn't for there. Um, and obviously other schools were recruiting it because you were a very good player. So the big question is, why did you choose Winnipeg and why the University of Winnipeg? Yeah, that's it. That is a good question. It definitely wasn't for the weather. <laughs> um, I actually don't think I realized what the winters were quite like here before I came. <laughs> so I don't know if that would have played into it. But um, for me, like you said, uh, Tanya being from Nova Scotia, I would say was such a huge part of it. Um, when I was in high school, I was recruited by you know, people from all over the country and some schools in the States. And um, I had explored a few options, but going away was always uh, a little bit scary for me. You know, Mm -hmm. when you're in high school, thinking about going across the country is not, you know, not, not always the most comfortable thing. And I was so comfortable with Tanya. She, she actually started recruiting me when I was in junior high. Um, So she was (laughs) someone that was just so familiar to me and my family. Like she, we had known her for years and Mm. uh, just someone I connected with right away. Like she would pop into my high school sometimes and make sure I was in class and say hi to the teachers. Cause I don't know if many people know but she actually went to the same high school that I did. Okay. Um, So there was just even more of a connection there. And um, yeah, it's just, I was so familiar with her. And when it came down to it, I ultimately knew I needed to go away to, you know, maybe be exposed to some higher level basketball. Uh, and it was just the obvious choice. Uh, she, she made me comfortable. She knew my family and I, I would say it really came down to her more than necessarily the <laughs> city or the province. It was, it was the coach for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, you know, take me back to the conversation where you either told Tanya or you told your parents I'm going to Winnipeg do you remember the moment when you're like I'm, this is happening or was it just like because she was around all the time it was kind of just like assumed like you looked at these other letters and stuff like I don't know or was there a moment when you said okay I'm going there yeah I, I actually remember I'm I'm a really shy kind of quiet uh might might even call me like a bit of an introvert and I I do remember just feeling a lot of pressure near the end of that grade 12 year. And I had kind of said to every coach, look, I just want to finish 
I want to finish provincials. I want to finish my grade 12 year and I'm not deciding till I'm done because I just wanted to be able to put it aside and, and focus on, you know, my team and my last year of high school, mm-hmm. which was really important to me. Um, and it was probably a couple of weeks after the season had finished and I was just sitting at home alone and I guess kind of talking to myself like, okay, Joanne, like <laughs> put your big girl pants on. It's time to make a decision here and, and thinking about it. And I actually called Tanya without talking to my parents and said, I'm coming. So, and then my parents (laughs) got home that day and I said, you know, guess what? I called Tanya and I'm going to university of Winnipeg and they were ecstatic. They were, they were really happy. And yeah, for me, it was just a decision I needed to kind of sit and make on my own. And I I was so excited when I called Tanya to tell her it was awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure she was very excited as well. (laughs) (laughs) She was like, yes. But no, I mean, it, I think there's, it's, it's interesting in doing this podcast, something that's, that I think I understood this before. I definitely did, but um, it just, the, the idea was just more solidified after doing this because it is more about the people. Like you said, you're like, I don't know about Winnipeg, like Tanya probably could have been anywhere and you, and you probably would have went there because it was about that connection. And she's from your town, she's from the same school. Um, and she was, she was present in your life uh, early on. And I think that's kind of like the, the interesting piece. And when I asked, um, you know, I had the same questions for Tanya, I was like, why? And, and it, was, it was a lot of the same thing. It was a lot of the same thing. Coaches early on that were there for her And, uh, kind of, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to, you're going to go with the people. And I think that's, that's kind of like the lesson that I've gotten from this. Um, I have to ask you though, what was your, do you remember your first winter (laughs) that first season? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know what? I actually, I don't, I don't remember that standing out as a (laughs) a huge factor. I remember Tanya did order us. Maybe it was because I was coming that year, like the biggest team winter jacket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they were great. Like, I think they had like three layers that zipped apart and, uh, you know, maybe that was to take care of me a little bit, but <laughs> I do remember having those in our first year. Those are those big ones. I think I remember them too. Cause I'm thinking, I remember Tanya wearing it at, like, it's like a very, it was like large and like very long and like a big yeah. kind of like, yeah, I definitely remember those. Now, when you were, when you were there in your first couple of years, where did you stay? Were you staying like near campus? Like, did you have to walk to school? Yeah, we had, um, uh, it's called Colony Square Apartments. I don't know. If oh yeah. Know. Yeah. It's like right across the street. Yep. Um, uh, and, and that was another connection I had. I don't know if you remember Sarah Henneberry was playing here. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a year or two before I came, she's also from Sackville High, the same high school I went <laughs> okay. to. Um, her dad was actually my high school coach, uh, Pat Henneberry. Uh-huh. So there was also that connection there. And her and I lived together in those apartments uh, the first few years. And then uh, when my sister transferred to U of W, uh, we actually got a second apartment in that building. So at one point, I think there was like, maybe four or five girls from the team all living in different apartments in Colony <laughs> Square. So it was kind of like a mini basketball residence. It was, it was fun. That's cool. And you, you brought up your sister. So, I mean, if, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, is she is your older sister? Or she, yes. But like by like a, a couple years only though, right? Yeah. She's three like, years older than three me. years. Okay. And so like, you know, I was going to ask you this later on, but what was it like playing I get, I mean, I'm going to assume that she came because you were there, but there may have been other factors, but what was it like playing with your sister? I mean, you obviously grew up with her and I'm going to ask you some questions later about, you know, starting to play basketball. And I'm sure she was probably a part of that, but what was it like playing with her in university? Was it, were you like, yes, happy when she came and I mean, I'm sure she will listen to this, but I'm sure you guys have a great relationship. So, or were you like, oh, I don't really want her around <laughs> because like, what, what was that like, that dynamic? I'm sure your parents were like, hey, cool. We can just watch one set of games now. That, that That's great. <laughs> but beyond that, like, what was it like for you personally? Oh, it was amazing. Like, we're super close. And how many people get to play with their sibling at the CIS level and, you know, make it to national championships and yeah. medals? I mean, <laughs> amazing is the only way to put it. Um, it's so cool that she came. Uh, And that's kind of funny when you, when you think about choosing where I went to school, going back to that, like 
there was a lot of assumptions that I was going to go to Dow and play with her. Mm-hmm. She played at Dow before she came to U of W. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, she was doing awesome there. I, I think she was like an all rookie in her first year. Like she was having a really great time there um, until she, she actually tore her Achilles tendon. Mm. That's kind of what sparked, you know, when you're sitting out a year anyway, it's, it's, it's a, an opportunity to transfer schools and yeah, it, it was just amazing that she actually made the switch and came to play with me. And yeah, I'm so grateful for that. It was an experience not many people get. Okay. Now, now how, inf- how influential, influential were you beyond the fact that you were just there, but like, were you like, Hey, just come like, or did she bring it up to you? Say, Hey, I'm thinking about this. Like, where did it, where, wh- what was the, the origin story? Oh man, you knew what? I, I can't remember who brought <laughs> it up first, but, <laughs> but uh, definitely as, as soon as the idea got put in our heads, it was like, yes, this is an amazing opportunity, you know, and she was, she's closer to Sarah Henneberry's age. So they had grown up playing like provincial mm-hmm. team and, and things together. So th- there was just so many connections and, you know, she really liked Tanya too. Tanya just, if you connect with Tanya, she's just got this personality that draws mm-hmm. you to her. And mm-hmm. yeah, we just all knew it would be a really good fit. And yeah, and we just went for it, transferred credits. I think she she still ended up graduating from Dalhousie. She actually transferred credits back. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, it was just, it was just awesome that she actually came and followed through. And yeah, we had some great time. <laughs> That's cool. So now that that was kind of like the end of your career with your sister, but I'm sure there's a beginning because um, you, you all were once, you know, small little kids and your parents are, you know, like I, you know, in doing the research, both your parents played the game and they introduced you, both of you to the game. So I don't need to ask that question, which is typically who introduced you to the game, but I do want to ask you, you know, what are some of your earliest basketball memories and maybe what are some of your earliest basketball memories that include your sister? You guys playing teams together? Uh, you know, what was it like? Was your mom and dad, were they taking you out to like teach you how to play? Do you guys have a hoop behind your your house in the garage. Yeah. Oh, there's so many places. <laughs> that one. Um, yeah. Obviously our parents introduced us to the game. They're both, they were phenomenal athletes. Um, they're both in the Acadia hall of fame. They're uh, like just <laughs> the best influences you could have. Um, my mom kind of coached me throughout and my dad kind of coached my sister. They both took one. And, um, but I mean, really, I just remember always playing you know like every opportunity we had uh I'm kind of that parent now that tells my kids how lucky they are that we have you know the nice hoop in the driveway because growing up I actually had a rim stapled to a tree (laughs) 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 and anybody that's seen our backyard in in Nova Scotia it's a hill and this was at the top of the hill so no way you were missing lots of shots your ball was rolling down the hill so um that that was my very first thing and then uh i'll never forget that one kid on in our neighborhood actually got one of the nice hoops and yeah we lived at his house like it was a a neighborhood thing like all the kids would just gather and play pickup all the time uh mm-hmm. and those are really the first memories right that informal just playing all the time and and you know games to five making teams and it, it was so fun And then as we got a little older, like just always going to drop-ins, we, Mm. we literally lived at the gym. We'd go to Dalhousie drop-in open gym where you just make teams and jump in or the community center. We actually got jobs supervising the open gym. (laughs) That's that's a go-to move, go-to move for ballers right there. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I mean, just all those things. We, I think we both just loved the game from an early age and played any chance we got. Nice. So were you and your sister, like, I mean, she's three years older. So, you know, you're 10, she's 13, you're 13, she's 16. But was, was there a competitive competitiveness there? Like, were you trying to chase her or, or be better than her at any point being the younger sister? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was really grateful when she was in high school, I think is when I really started like admiring her and looking up to her. Cause you know, once you start playing in tournaments and you get all-star, like 
she was being having a lot of success and I just I wanted that too and I wanted that really bad and I probably didn't verbalize that to anyone because I've always been pretty quiet about you know how I'm feeling on the inside but I always wanted to be like her and uh, my dad actually coached her high school team and I got to go practice with them I would I would go to their oh, practice, nice. practice with them and that was so cool for me. They probably, she probably thought my annoying little sister, you know, coming in and practicing with us, but I loved it. And I remember loving it so much. And then, you know, her rookie year at Dal was amazing. And I remember that year in particular when I was in high school and just talking to my coach about that and just saying like, I want to get there. I want to, I want to do as well as she is and just mm -hmm. looking up to her so much because she, she had a lot of accomplishments too. And we were, we were kind of different players, but you mm -hmm. know, even at university of Winnipeg, we wouldn't have accomplished what we did without the things she brought to our team. She was mm -hmm. such a phenomenal defender and, you know, her intensity and, you know, she brought a lot of things that made us so successful. Absolutely. So, so you, you, you pumped her up a little bit there, which again, I mean, she, she deserves everything you've said, but was there a point, or I guess at, at any point, did the two of you compete? Like, were you one of the, the younger sisters like saying, Hey, I want to play you one-on-one. -on -one, and she was like, leave me alone. Like, I'm going to kill you. And then you play and she'd <laughs> kill you. Like, did you guys play against each other a lot? Like what was the dynamic there? You know, I, I don't think we did play one-on-one. -on -one very Really? Much. No, wow, I'm surprised. I'm surprised <laughs> that for me, like to challenge someone one on one is totally not, not my <laughs> personality at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm more of that, you know, quiet, really wanting to succeed and do well. But to go up to someone and say, hey, well, you me one on one, that's totally not. But this is your sister. Like, you can't tell me. she. OK, so you can't tell me she wasn't like, OK, like. Joanne, let's play a little bit of one-on-one. -on -one. Or like you guys must have done shooting games, 21. Like you can't have a sister that plays basketball and not have ever competed <laughs> against her. I'm sure we did in that way. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a one-on-one one -on -one or battling it out. I don't think was ever really our Just thing. wasn't it. I hear you. I hear you. So you had mentioned, uh, you know, you talk, your parents were probably your biggest influences when it comes to the game right they coached you they introduced you to the game uh, you mentioned your sister as well was someone that you looked up to and was and someone was a mentor to you were there any other you know basketball mentors um i know we mentioned tanya um, i'm sure she was as well but uh, but i was curious like if if there weren't are any other ones that you'd like to mention mention them but then maybe some some things that you know you still re you that you appreciate and you're grateful for to this day maybe something they taught you something they've done for you or just kind of like you know, the way that they modeled behavior. Start with the mentor, if there are any others, and then maybe just something that, uh, something that stands out in your mind when you think about them. Yeah. I mean, that's an easy question to ask because I think I was so lucky. <laughs> Literally, I have a horseshoe somewhere because I was surrounded by just the best basketball people. And I don't mm -hmm. know how it all fell into place, but uh, Scott Monroe is still one of my best friends to this day. And it started out as a coach player relationship. And he is just one of the most dedicated people to the sport that I've ever met. He, uh, I don't know if you know who he is. He, he coaches St. Mary's women's basketball now, but for yes. years, he was the provincial team coach for Nova I think Ta Tanya mentioned him as well, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, probably. <laughs> um, <laughs> just he's an absolute gym rat like he he is the definition of just wanting to get in the gym if you want to work on something he's there anytime mm -hmm. and and just like when are we working one-on-one -on -one? when are we when are we getting in the gym and the amount of just one-on-one -on -one sessions I had with him and you know people that I played with had with him he's just always willing to work uh, and then it was interesting how our relationship developed we and I actually ended up being his assistant coach once I was finished in the provincial team program no way and it was a blast and you know he's kind of like a Tanya he he just connects with people and mm. yeah I mean if I didn't have him I don't know if I would have improved to the level that I did like he just he mm -hmm. put so much time and so much work and uh 
when he got a university job, this was after I had played for him and he'd done provincial team. Like everyone was just so happy. Um, I joked with Tanya, she's lucky he wasn't coaching university <laughs> when, I, <laughs> when I graduated because, you know, that would have been a really tough decision. Yeah. He's just yeah. he's phenomenal. So, so did, did, uh, like when you were uh, in the off season, did you go back to Nova Scotia? Is that when you coached the provincial team? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so yeah. how many years did you do that for? I'm trying to remember. I, uh, it must've been at least two or three. And then I actually made the switch to helping out with Manitoba's provincial team. Yeah. Yeah. When yeah. I started, uh, when I started staying, but I think, I didn't help out with Manitoba, I think, till after I graduated. So, yeah, it was it was a a decent stretch of years. Sometimes the years blend, and I'm getting old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know exactly how you feel. You're like, I don't know when that was. <laughs> but so, and do you remember if any of those years when you were helping out with the uh, Nova Scotia team? I don't know what what age group or or who you were coaching, but did you ever coach against Tanya? Because I know she was doing provincial team stuff as well. Yes, I think we did. <laughs> I think we did. I, um, I'm trying to remember who won. I, I know there was, a, there was one year and they made a big deal of the matchup. This is when I was helping uh, Canada Games year. I actually helped mm -hmm. with Manitoba. And my sister and Scott were coaching Nova Scotia. Um, <laughs> so they made a big deal because we did play each other. And I believe they beat us i'll give them the bragging rights i'm, I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure they beat us but yeah it was just really neat uh, that's where i just feel so lucky to have i just feel like i have such a basketball family right mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. to have those experiences even past playing and and still connecting and seeing everyone it's it, it huh, it's just really neat experiences for sure Absolutely. So I, and, um, I think we were offline when I brought this up. Actually, I know we were offline. I asked you about uh, your kids and we were talking about what sports they play. Um, and I guess the question I have is if at some point, do you see yourself coaching any of them? Like, would you, would you step up and be like, you know what, I want to do this. Or are you going to be a hands off? Like, you know what, I'm just going to observe and, and hang out and enjoy being a parent. Or do you have any desire or inclination to step in if they're playing basketball? Uh, that's an easy one. I would love to coach them. <laughs> like love, love, love it. I, uh, I, I coach, uh, I, I teach at the university of Winnipeg collegiate now. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I coached our basketball program for years and my kids are kind of the reason I had to step away from coaching and I miss it. I miss it a lot. I, I just love being in the gym yeah. and I'm, I'm really itchy. Like I would love to coach them. That would just be awesome. So when the opportunity comes up, you're definitely going to be ready is what you're telling me. Oh, a hundred percent. That's what I've often said to people, you know, I'm stepping away from coaching now to, you know, focus on my kids a little bit more and mm -hmm. hopefully <laughs> step into their role as coach one day. Cause well, number one, it's so important to volunteer. I think if you have the yeah. knowledge and you can do it, I mean, I know from coaching in high school and trying to find coaches for our teams it's not an easy job. So you know, <laughs> no kidding. I have the knowledge and ability and I would love to step up and coach them when they're ready. So do you have any desire um, beyond your kids to, you know, when maybe when they get a little bit older and, and you have a bit more free time to do any coaching outside of that? Like, do you see that in your future? Um, I know, like, like say you, like say you don't, <clears throat> like say your kids don't really get into basketball seriously. Um, you maybe coach them a couple of years, but do you have that desire inside to like, you know what I do? I think I'm, I want to coach still down the line. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, I, I honestly, when I first started coaching, I didn't know if I would love it um, because I can be sort of a quiet person. And mm. I realized that my competitiveness comes out just as much coaching as it did. Playing. <laughs> and yeah, I, I really, really loved it. I enjoyed, I've enjoyed everything I've helped coach. So yeah. If, if I don't end up kind of following that with my kids, I would love, I would step right back into it, you know, whether it's at school or, you know, whatever level for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, ever, anyone who's listening right now, um, Joanne is, will be ready to coach in a couple of years. So uh, make sure to just constantly email her until, until she's ready and you could have a, 
someone helping you out. But like, I think you said um, uh, your one son's playing uh, with the attack or he, I don't know if he's still doing it or was it a camp or he's, he's with the attack program. What about uh, maybe just jumping in and helping, helping out there a little bit? Oh, for sure. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I don't want to step on soup's toes. <laughs> I know. I know. You know uh, I'm sure they would love to have another coach. So if you're like, I'll just volunteer my time. I'm sure they wouldn't say no. You know, that program is amazing. I'll give them a plug right now because, you know, it's a great, I just sit back and watch. They've got so many phenomenal coaches. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, it's awesome just to sit back and watch. They're so great with the kids. Ryan loves it. Uh, and obviously part of me is just hoping he continues with it. <laughs> yes. Really enjoys it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a wonderful program with tons of qualified coaches. It's awesome. Absolutely. To there. Yeah, absolutely. There's a ton, a ton of coaches. They bring in people who aren't even, they have like part-time people who come in and do kind of like that. They, they have a whole gang of stuff. Really yeah. good program. Um, so I wanted to, uh, transition a little bit. So at the beginning, I read off a huge list of accolades. Uh, <laughs> you've, you've pretty much from a personal standpoint have, have you, you won every accolade essentially. I mean, there's some other ones there, but you've won all the prestigious ones, the, more, the ones that everyone, you know, is, is setting out to, 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 to get every, anyone would be happy to have any of those awards is what I'm trying to say. And you've won multiple, multiple, and then at different levels as well. Um, so you had, you've had an amazing career. That said, you know, you've had some things that I'm sure you've left on the table or moments that you wish you could have improved on. But then obviously with a huge list of accolades like that, you have some amazing moments, right? So like, regardless of how successful your individual career is, it's still going to be ups and downs, right? And, and so in saying all that, I was wondering if you can maybe talk about some of your most memorable basketball moments. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, think about that one for a second. I know, I know. This is um, it, I, I find this to be a tough one for people, and and, I, and I'll, I'll add to that. Um, they don't necessarily have to be uh, directly related to the court. You know what I mean? Some things happen related to games that could be memorable. Just whatever you know, whatever comes to mind uh, when I ask you that question. Oh, totally. Yeah, you know, it is funny because you, like you said, like there's a huge list of the individual awards and, and all those things. And well, I, you know, quietly appreciated all those things and knew I worked hard for them. When I think about memories and, you know, the things that really stand out, it's always team stuff, right? Like, yeah, it, yeah of course. I, it wouldn't have mattered if I won one individual award. The things that really mattered was those team accomplishments. Um, I guess one of the big ones, and I'm not even sure what, I think it was my third year, um, it would have been, uh, well, Brooke Bender, Brooke Foose now, her mm -hmm. fifth year, we were at nationals and we upset, uh, SFU who we had been trying to beat all year. We beat them in the semifinal, I believe. Uh, it was a huge upset. Uh, and it was like winning the national championship. <laughs> I can't say there was another game that made me more happy than beating SFU and in Brooks fifth year. And it was just such a team accomplishment. Like ugh, the excitement in that game will stay with me forever. It was mm. amazing. And, and, then, and then we went out and lost the national final the next day. <laughs> um, but, you know, and it's funny because you see that sometimes in, you know, other sports teams as well, when they have that huge upset, yeah. that huge win, it's hard to come back the next day and, and yep. put it all together. And I think even in that loss, we were so excited that we had beat <laughs> you that it, it honestly still didn't matter. It was You're like, ah, oh, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, yeah, but we beat as of you. It was, uh. That, you know, it's moments like that where you, you know, just put something together or accomplish something that no one's mm. expecting, especially mm. when you do it as a team. Uh, yeah, those are the things for me that always stood out the most. Absolutely. What um, that SFU team, I mean, I know SFU was very dominant for a long time, like they had like a stretch. Who, who are some of the players on that team? Do you remember any of them? Uh, I'm trying to remember. They had this one post that was, massive I think it was like <laughs> Kazoga or because I don't know um, but that was part of the excitement like we shut her down 
Nice. And she had just dominated everyone all year. She was one of the biggest presences I've ever seen in CIS women's basketball. And yeah, yeah we, we just <laughs> did a number. We prepped for her, you know, for weeks going into it. And yeah. we did it. And it, it was really cool. So you, you'd mentioned like you got, you guys, you know, you knock off SFU and you all, everyone's so excited. And then you go and you lose in the, in the national final. Um, I know you've, you've got close a couple of times, been to the nationals. Maybe now you don't care because it's later on. Maybe you do. Cause I've, I've, I've interviewed some people who 30 years later, uh, when I asked them this exact question, they brought up losses and I was like, Oh, okay. So it all depends on what type of person you are. I think this question really varies, but do you have any, I don't know, resentment might not be the right word, but just any emotions connected to like any of those tough losses or not winning a title? Like I said, you, you met, like you said, all those individual awards, it was, it's always more about the team anyways. Um, and you, and you came so close so many times you've had some amazing teams. Yeah. Do you have any feelings of like, ah, that, that would have been nice. Or are you just like, you know what, that's just the way it goes. Yeah. I think I'll always have that. <laughs> that, that itch. I mean, I was set up in the probably the most perfect situation in my final year. And that one will always sting the most. Uh, fifth year, we hosted nationals. We made it to the final against SFU. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> and we came up short. And that was a tough one to kind of process and uh you know, just move on from, mm -hmm. so, you know, it, it's just such a perfect ending, if you will. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we didn't get it. But, you know, I did, I did a lot of work that year. Probably my fifth year was maybe one of my hardest years mentally. Uh, yeah. It was a lot of pressure. Uh, it was a lot of talk early about, you know, maybe being player of the year, you know, and, and when everyone around you is talking about these things constantly, it's, it definitely starts to weigh on you a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. And again, I'm the luckiest person in the world because who did I get to work with that year? Cal Botterill, uh, who was doing some work at U of W. And he is, I mean, he's phenomenal. He's been to the Olympics. He's worked with such high level athletes. And I still remember a couple sessions we had kind of, you know, leading up to playoffs and, and going into it and just really talking about no regrets and, talking about you know he helped me out a lot because I didn't know I was going to be player of the year and there was all this mm -hmm. talk and and all that pressure and in just talking about you know the people in my life and are they going to look at me differently whether I'm player of the year or not are they going to look at me differently whether I win a championship or not that it's not going to change you know five years of a career at U of W and he helped mm -hmm. me so much just to kind of get through that and and focus and at the end of the day, it was tough to lose that game, but I really, I came out feeling no regrets. Like I, mm. I came out knowing I played an awesome game. I played as hard as I could have. And you know what? We came up short and it's a lot easier to process it when that's your thought process than that, you know, coulda, shoulda, woulda. I did everything I could to prepare for it. Um, and that made it easier. You know, I had amazing people, to, you know, mentally to help me through that. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, that I'm an adult and look back, it's kind of like, oh, it's the, you know, that one piece that yeah. I would love another shot at, but yeah, yeah. I won't get one. So, <laughs> well, it's that, you know, that's so, that's so special that you had. Uh, and just to be clear, uh, is it Kyle, sorry, what was it, Kyle? Oh, Cal Botterill. Ka Cal Botterill. So he's a sports psychologist, I'm guessing, or sports, yes. right? Um, so, and Jen Botterill, like hockey star, is his daughter. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, that makes sense. And so, I think he did go to the Olympics with our Canadian women's hockey team, and he's worked with, you know, some other really very high level athletes. Yeah. Well, and so I, I kind of want to like key in on that because I think now more than ever, um, you know, people are much, 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 much more tuned into the fact that like you need to be kind of taking care of that part of it, you know, like the, you know, the, the mental aspect of it. And, and then you you know, the whole, you know, well-being and all that stuff, it is, it is much more present. Um, and so to, to hear that back then you had somebody, um, you know, 
a professional at that, not yeah. just, you weren't just journaling or getting your thoughts out, which, which again, those are great things to do. Um, but you actually had a professional, but I just think that, and, and, and then to hear how you processed it, you kind of just brought us through that. I think it just emphasizes the fact that like, you know, people, um, really do need to get out of their own head and they really do need to talk to people. And I think it's really important. And again, I don't think I'm, there's nothing new I'm saying here, but, um, I, I just thought that was very interesting that, to hear you kind of reflect back and, and to say how um, that changed your perspective um, and how you would have approached that um, with all that pressure that you had to that take on. So it's it, in that those kind of resources, I think there is a lot out there. So people who are listening, um, coaches, uh, if you do see have players who, you know, are struggling with stuff, you know, there's tons of resources, but I think that's, that's an area that if you're missing uh, as a coach, you really need to key in on. Cause like, I think I, I interviewed um, Uzo and they were saying that like um, they had tons of stress too. There was a certain time yeah. and Tanya was like, Hey, like, look, what's up, you know, like, and yeah, they said that was so important. Like that was like such a key element. So anyways, I don't I'm not going to beat that to death, but it, I think just using your example, just kind of encourage people. If you're a coach, you're a player, um, even if you're a teammate, right. To make sure that you're kind of there for people, because it will make the difference in their experience. And and again, at the end of the day, like you do want to compete and win. So it's going to make it, it's just going to make a difference in on every level. Right. And I think it's just really yeah. important to emphasize that. Yeah. And Tanya was also, I'm glad Uzo mentioned that because she's very tuned into that. Like she was, mm. you know, just amazing at noticing. And, you know, even in my first few years, coming across the country isn't easy, right? And, mm -hmm. and she'd noticed the homesickness kind of creeping in. She'd just kind of look at me and be like, you need to go for a drive? Let's go. Yeah, for a drive. yeah. She'd come pick me up. We'd just drive around the city and chat and she'd share stories about, you know, when she came and was homesick and we'd yeah. talk about Nova Scotia and it, that stuff's important, right? It like is. that just helps is. To keep your mental health okay. And mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. I'm glad it's more uh, relevant today, right? Like it's, yep. it's, it's not as hush hush. People talk about it. I mean, I'm a guidance mm -hmm. counselor now, so I <laughs> you know, you know, I, I, I like to promote positive mental health and then be yep. there for my students. So yeah, it's so important. It really is. It really is. And so I am happy. Um, so you finished up playing and you know, you, you went out almost on top, you know, as close as you can go to on top, you had, had an unbelievable final, final year. Um, did you have any desire or itch to go play professionally or were you just like I'm you or did you know already like I'm done this is it no I had a I had an interesting experience with this <laughs> so I actually did go um oh I you did yes <laughs> where did you play uh I went to Switzerland okay um and I knew very quickly it was not for me <laughs> <laughs> um yeah again I'm I'm kind of a quiet, sometimes a bit of an introvert. And, you know, I, I went and I was, they kind of set me up. I was living in like the shed on a farm, <laughs> <laughs> like this family's shed, you know, it was really interesting. Um, my meals were at a restaurant. Um, so I went to this restaurant like three times a day by myself. Uh, and right away, I just, I was so isolated uh, and, I speak a little bit of French. Most of the girls on my team spoke like total French. There was no one that spoke much English. My coach couldn't speak any English. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of sit back, watch the drills, jump in. Um, and yeah, I just, you know, when you try something out and you think, nope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a hard no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would have loved to keep playing basketball, I think just kind of jumping into that situation and right away, just the loneliness I felt and the, and the isolation. And I, I still remember just calling my parents and my sister and just being so happy to talk to someone. And then when they had to go, I would literally almost burst into tears, like, please. <laughs> and now wow. sit alone for, you know, hours and, and not talk to anyone again. And it was quite difficult. So mm -hmm. yeah, I ended up not doing not doing the whole season. I, I came home and I have no regrets about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I nice, tried it nice. out. Um, yeah. I definitely skill-wise could have, 
easily could have played, but mm-hmm. the, the situation was just not the right one for me. So yeah. I ended up coming back and being okay with it. Cause I thought, yeah, you know, I went and tried it out and you know, it just wasn't for me. Yep. Yep. Well, it's interesting. I, you know, I've interviewed some people uh, who are playing professionally now and uh, they mentioned some of the, the same elements that they exist. However, that said now, like, I mean, look what you and I are doing. Yes. Um, the ability to get, you know, that have that connection with family and friends. And this is where, like, you know, there's there's negative sides to social media and there's positive sides. There's negative sides of this technology and there's positive sides. This would be a positive, right? The ability to connect with people over long distances. And I know it's not the same as in person, but it's it's, it's way better because I'm sure you were just making phone calls, right? To, yes. to people. Yeah. And that's <laughs> OK. I got to go. Like, I'm like, hey, see you later. Like, you can't even just exchange a video like, hey, I'm thinking about you, whatever. So. I think that is uh, maybe something it would have been would have been interesting to see how the dynamic would have been different had you had those some some of those techno- technological advances because uh, it really does change the the reality oh, that that we live in right yeah yeah absolutely it it could have been a whole different story but yeah you know, I'm I'm thankful I was confident enough to recognize that yes you know that this isn't this isn't making me feel good it's not yep. worth it to me and kind of pulling the plug because it was a it was a hard thing to do I mean there's a level of oh what's everyone gonna think I'm just coming yeah. home and yeah. um you know that's not always easy but at the end of the day I you know to get off that plane in Canada I was so <laughs> you're like <laughs> yes okay that's I think it felt right that's and that's what's important right like it's, it's that totally makes sense so I mentioned earlier on um that you know I actually when asked Adam Wedlick uh, I said, is, was Joanne like the youngest player to ever be inducted? Like, I mean, because what year did you graduate again? 2005. Okay, you graduated in 2005. We're sitting right now in 2022. And when you were in, and what year, do you remember what year you were inducted? Um, well, the, the dinner hasn't happened yet because of- Yes, it's, it's this year. It's this, it's, it was last year then, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So So 2021. So, I mean, again, that's not that long because there's other people and you look at them, like they they went in when they were like 50 years old. A lot of them are like 50 years old or 45. Like they've been out of the, you know, I mean, if they were players, they they're going in way later. So, I mean, and again, your career speaks for itself. So there's no, it's not, it's not a surprise. Like, oh, you shouldn't be in there. But I was wondering, were you surprised when you found out that, like, hey, uh, you've been uh, nominated, you're being inducted into the Hall of Fame? Were you like, really? Yeah, you know, and thank you for that because I, I actually made the comment to my husband, aren't I too young to be in here? He looked at me and said, you're getting old. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yes, no, I, you know, I, I was obviously super honored when I found out. Um, I know typically, yes, like, cause I, I remember even when my parents got put in the hall of fame, like mm. we were grown adults and my kids are quite young. So exactly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just a huge honor and it's really neat. Um, neat to be able to, you know, be put in and kind of tell my kids about it and show them the video and they were kind of like oh so you were like you were good at basketball yeah <laughs> they, yeah they have no clue right <laughs> they'll they'll you know they'll understand when they get older like like everything with kids they later on they're like oh i didn't they'll be like you were really you were really good mom weren't you like yeah <laughs> kind of <laughs> that's cool yeah. yeah i was just i was just shocked because like you know i was i was going over the bio and, and i was like she's in the hall of fame and i was like and then I'd looked at your graduating year. I'm like, wow. But I'm like, yeah, okay. Like your career speaks. So it's not, it's again, it's not a surprise. Um, and again, I'm sure there's other people who have gone in before they were like, you know, 50 and 45 and four, whatever, but like, it's still, I, I was still a little bit taken back, but again, like I said, no surprise there. Um, so we're going to get into the end here. I have a few questions before we go. Now you may have already answered these questions earlier on and feel free just to like, you don't have to come up with new answers. You can be like, you know, I already told this story and that it was from, it was this. Um, but um, they're more specific, just kind of like things you've learned kind of throughout the journey. So, um, you know, the first question I have is, you know, what, what is one or some of the biggest obstacles you faced in your basketball career? And then what did it teach you about yourself um, 
I know we had just mentioned when you went to go play pro, that's one thing and taught you about yourself. You're like, I need people around me. I, I need a community. Um, but were there any other, you know, obstacles uh, throughout the, throughout the journey that, and that taught you something? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think anytime you struggle with something along the way, it's, it's going to teach you something. Um, definitely, you know, coming away, I, I kind of touched on that with Tanya, but the homesick of being away was mm -hmm. not easy. Um, and like I said, I mean, the supports I've had around me, I'm so lucky because if I wouldn't have had, you know, someone like Tanya or, you know, my sister transferring to be with me, it would just, it feels like I had the perfect storm of so many people rooting for me and, and helping mm -hmm. me out. But um, I'm, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm really glad I went away for university. I think it was a struggle, but it made me grow up. Yeah, a lot faster than I would have and, and mature and, and sort of find myself a little bit. Um, I, I, it's funny, I talk to my high school students about that a lot now when they're kind of navigating and, and some of them are scared to go away or thinking about going away. Uh, I'm fortunate I can always share, you know, my own experience with them yeah. and talk about that because it's, it's not an easy thing to do. Uh, and it's something that takes a, an adjustment period but it's something that I think really shaped who I am. And, and, and you know, I grew up a lot faster and, and found myself through that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was mm -hmm. one struggle along the way and not necessarily basketball related. I mean, anyone goes away to university, but For sure. it's, uh, it, it's something that, you know, really shaped who I am too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that that is a, a big thing is taking, taking the risk. Cause like you hear it again and, it's, it's so funny. We all have to go through this, but it does help to hear it from someone else when you're, when you're making your decision that something like that is possible. And I think taking a, a risk and putting yourself out there and understanding that it's going to be hard, but it might be the right thing to do. It's like, okay. Like, and then when you go through it, you come on the other end, you're like, okay, well, yeah, I know it totally changed who I was. And I, again, like it made me grow up fast or it challenged me in, in ways I would have never been challenged. And, and again, adults, not, not I mean, most adults know this, that like, that's kind of what life's, about is kind of accepting those challenges. And sometimes if you're really courageous, almost seeking them out. Um, I think that's, you know, that's kind of like that there is levels to stuff. I mean, people who seek out challenges are kind of, you know, tend to be very successful people. Um, but uh, I think that's kind of the message, you, you know, you, you got from that, if I'm not mistaken, it's just kind of yeah, like, you know, totally. putting yourself out there and accepting the challenge. So then another question I have here is kind of a similar question, but, um, you know, are there things or a thing that you've learned through basketball um, that you apply to your everyday life? So, you know, again, the, the classic ones are, and I'll prime them for you, but like the classic ones that like, you know, that if someone asked me that, it would say, you know, uh, working hard, for example, or, you know, things like that. Those tend to be the, the general ones. And, and again, I think that's something that most people who've had success will agree to like, yeah, you have to work hard. Like there's no question about that. But for you personally, what are some of those things that you've learned? And they can be a philosophy. It can be just something you've learned kind of, again, about yourself, but something that like you now live by. And you had mentioned already, you pass some things on to your students. So again, similar question, but uh, slightly different. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, like work, work ethic and work <laughs> like it's applicable to anything, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also just, I mean, kind of on the same coin, but you know, just, never giving up and, and working for something mm. you know, like things that are easy are you typically not worth it right yes it's the, it's the things that you put the, the hard work in and, and accomplish that give you the most satisfaction uh, mm. and that can really be transferred you know to anything work you know relationships um, and basketball you know even, yeah. even when you ask kind of those memories to me, the ones that stick out are the ones that, you know, you worked so hard for, and maybe people didn't think you'd accomplish, but you did. Yes. Um, yes. So yeah, to me, that's, that's just a life lesson. Right. And when you see what's possible, when you put that work in and, and feel that appreciation, when you accomplish it, it feels mm. so much better than the things that come easy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Things that come easy, don't they just kind of, I mean, I think we, most people just take them for granted for the most part, right? If there's, yeah. there's no sacrifice, then it does, it's not special at all. If you, you're, you're given something, you're like, oh, cool. It's awesome. Um, okay, so last question here. Now, I mean, this question, you know, I've, it's interesting when you do podcasts because 
sometimes I'll ask a question to someone and they just answer it with like, uh, like they give you the perfect answer, but like for me, you know what my perfect answer would be. So when I ask you this question, I'm saying all this out loud because there is no perfect answer, but I always find it to be an interesting question. So I'm very curious to hear what your answer is, you know, taking your journey into consideration. So I'm just going to read the question directly. If you could give a message to every basketball player, regardless of age, who loves the game, you just give them a message. It's just your message. I'm not deciding the topic, but it's a, it's a basketball related message. What would that message be? And they're of any age. They just started playing, just started playing. I mean, you, and I say any age, cause you decide it can be, it can be to young coaches. It can be to players. It can be to someone back in Nova Scotia. You know what I mean? Like a younger yeah. version of yourself. Oh, I know the message. I'm trying to think of how to word it. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, something along the lines of like, if you love the game, just play it as much as you can. Right. Just yeah. if, if you love it, find a way to play it every day. Get out to the gym, get in your driveway, you know, put put everything you have into it because it can give you a lot back. I guess that mm -hmm. would be, you know, the one thing when I look back, I sought out every opportunity I could to, to you know, do what I loved. And for me, it paid off huge. And, you know, for everyone, it might not pay off in you know, so many, uh, you know, awards and, and recognition, but, you know, you might as well do what you love and put everything into it because you never know what could happen. Right. I love it. That's, that's perfect. That's a, that's a great way to wrap it up. Um, I've learned tons about you. Like I mentioned, I didn't really know. I, I knew who you were as a player, but because you didn't come from Manitoba, there were some missing pieces there. So, um, it was, it was super interesting to hear kind of your story. Um, and thanks for taking the time. Yeah, no, this is, I'm glad we could finally, <laughs> <laughs> finally uh, put together a time that worked for everyone. No, it was really Absolutely. Cool. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Joanne. Yeah, thank Take you. Care. All right. Bye. Thanks for listening to today's episode. Please like, subscribe, follow, and share this series, and reach out to us with your comments on the show. Thanks again for joining us.